switching from Bikram to Barkin. How I came up with a different sequence, definitely honoring Bikram's sequence of the 26 and 2, because it didn't take away anything, by the way. What I added on, and I want to explain to you how and why. An inside track on the Barkin method to the madness. Because Bikram Yoga is the 26 postures and two breathing exercises that Bikram put together. It's his sequence. It wasn't his teacher's sequence, Bishna Ghosh. It was Bikram's sequence. He put together based on postures that were taught to him by Bishna Ghosh. And Bikram's really the first one to turn the heat on, hence the term hot yoga. So when you're talking about hot yoga, we're talking about Bikram. We're talking about Bikram. We're talking about the 26 and 2. And this is the sequence that I originally learned. In fact, I've said this before many times in my videos. My teacher training program, we did three, four classes a day with Bikram. And that's what I'm an expert at. So if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. If you want to learn all about hot yoga, tutorials, flows, and factoids, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Any comments you have, put them down below. I get to all the comments. The very first thing that I added was sun salutation. Now, interestingly enough, Bikram starts his advanced class with sun salutation. Now, the Bishna Gosha and Bikram sun salutation, they go from runner's lunge and they do a chaturanga up and down, but they don't do upward dog and downward dog, and then back again, runner's lunge, backward bend, and that's the Bikram Bishna Gosha sun salutation. Now, a different type of sun salutation that comes more from southern India, they include the upper dog and the downward dog. And here is the first thing that I added on because I love those two poses, especially downward dog. So I added the upper dog downward dog. Even though Bikram starts his advanced class with a sun salutation, it's not an advanced sequence. And in my opinion, I think it's a great warm up to get the body moving, to get the juices flowing, to start your practice creating that internal warm up. So that's the first thing I added in the Barking Method sequence was the sun salutation. And what I did was I honored Bikram and Bishna Ghosh by doing a double chaturanga because in the Bikram Bishna Ghosh, they go down and they come back up again. So we go down, up and down into upper dog, downward dog back to the 26 and 2. That's where it all started for me. And I love every single posture in Bikram's 26 and 2 sequence. In fact, like I said before, I didn't take away anything. Every single posture in Bikram's sequence is in my sequence. Now I have two sequences practiced in the Barking Method. We'll talk about in a little bit. Bring us to the next point. I was never subjected to just the 26 and 2 sequence. Because very soon in my practice, within three months of my practice, and I accelerated pretty fast in the Bikram world, I was doing Bikram's advanced class. So when I talk about doing three, four classes a day, one of those classes was the advanced class, which is a 91 posture sequence. Now Bikram also did the advanced postures as well. And Bikram was a weight trainer because Bishnu Ghosh's main thing wasn't just yoga. His Bikram's teacher, Bishnu Ghosh, he combined weight training and yoga together. So Bikram did weight training. He did the advanced postures. I started out doing the 26 and 2 and the advanced class. Later on, I did some weight training. I don't know if you can tell or not. But the point is, I was never subjected just to the 26 and 2 sequence. And that's another reason why I wanted to start to add things to it. And once again, I'm an advocate of the 26 and 2. And I think one should practice the 26 and 2 sequence because it's a great foundation. It can help people get very strong, very flexible, fairly soon, lose weight, get in shape. It's a combination of flexibility and strength. And it can be life-changing. People have gone off medication. There's been thousands and thousands of miracle stories of people getting healed through this practice. And I honor the practice. Which brings me to the next point. In my humble opinion, if you just do the 26 and 2 and that's all you do in your daily exercise, I believe you're going to be limited. You're going to get very strong and you're going to get very flexible fairly soon. And then at one point, this is my opinion. You can disagree if you want. But at one point, another type of rigidity will set in. If you're doing the triangle only this, this direction, if you're doing the postures only in this way, the body starts to adapt to it and it takes longer and longer to get results. You plateau for a longer period of time, bringing us to the next point. When I started going off, and I was Bikram senior teacher, I've said that before on my channel many times, for over 18 years, and I was really the only one Bikram allowed to do Bikram conferences, and I represented Bikram and Bikram Yoga in the Yoga Journal conferences, Omega conference, Johnny Kess did a conference in the Midwest, and that's what I was made aware of. All the different styles of yoga and all these different poses that took the body, and this is the point, in a different direction. Case in point, revolving triangle, taking the spine in the other direction. I started doing revolving triangle on these conferences because I would attend many of the senior teachers' classes, and I struggled. I was challenged with the revolving triangle because I'd only been doing triangle in one direction. Now you take the spine in the other direction, and big difference it makes. So why is that good? Because we want to add extra range of motion for the body, especially for the spine. That's the main thing in Hatha Yoga. Definitely Bikram and, and Bishnu Ghosh are advocates of getting the spine open and 
and subtle and strong. So taking the spine in the other direction in a revolving triangle I saw was a revolutionary concept in the future of your spine, the future of your health, the future of your life. And our particular style of yoga comes from the state of Bengal, the city of Calcutta, where the Bengal tiger is really the symbol for the Bengal yogi. So one of my students a long time ago, Peter Palladino, who does my anatomy sessions now, bought me these two Bengal tiger teeth. How cool is that? And it's supposed to bring you good luck. I don't know if you've ever seen them on the back of my altar here, but two Bengal tiger teeth representing Bengal yoga where we come from. And the yogi will actually sit on a tiger skin, a Bengal tiger skin at the, the Bengal yogis, and that's supposed to bring them good luck and good energy. Not that they kill the tiger. People say, well, why would you kill a tiger? They don't kill the tiger. They find a dead tiger and they take its skin. And when they find whatever tiger they take the skin from, that tiger in the next life will go into a much better place. They also sit on deer skin and it grounds them from the vibration of the earth, the magnetic pull of the earth. And the next thing I wanted to add to the sequence were hip openers. I found some wonderful hip openers that I add in my practice on a daily basis. The first one is what we call Supta Bajrasana. Other styles of yoga call it Supta Bhadakanasana. Our style of yoga, we call it Bajrasana. Bajra is the creation of Shiva. She's the goddess of the hunt. So this is a great external rotation of the hips. Now, in contrast to that, is a posture that I actually named, Janupadasana 2, foot to knee pose 2, where now we take the hips in the other direction in an internal rotation and bring that knee into the middle that stretches the IT band and the outside of the hip. And then Janupadasana 1, interestingly enough, Emmy Cleves and I were teaching this pose when we were still teaching the 26 and 2, I don't know if Bikram found out about that or not, but it's a great posture to get into the glute and underneath the glute, the piriformis. And then another hip opener that I introduced was Happy Baby, another great pose to open up the sides of the hips, open up the IT bands, greater range of motion for the hips. And one of the reasons why I'm making this video, because I am representing hot yoga, and a lot of times I talk about Bikram yoga, and many times I feature postures that are in Bikram sequence, and they happen to be in my sequence as well. I don't just do the 26 and 2. That's what I wanted to talk about. The Barkin method includes other poses. If you're looking to be a yoga teacher and be certified in the 26 and 2, I have an online course that you can do that with. I'm also doing a 26 and 2 live training this fall in September and October in Bloomfield, New Jersey, a school called Zora Hot Yoga. I put links down in the description below. But my main emphasis and what I'm mostly passionate about is the Barkin method. Doing every single posture in the 26 and 2, but adding postures like upper body strength and hip openers, taking the spine in the other direction like revolving triangle. So my live trainings and my online course introduce these different poses along with the 26 and 2. It's a fusion of the two. If you're interested in taking an online Barkin method teacher training program, once again, I put links down in the description below. We'd love to have you join the family. Bringing us to another point. Vishnu Ghosh was a weight trainer. That was his main thing along with yoga and the combination of the two, weight training and yoga. And one of the main concepts in weight training is that you shock the body. You don't always do the same exercise. If you're doing bicep curls, you're doing tricep hammer, if you're doing hammer curls, you're always gonna change it up. If you only did one particular exercise, the body adapts to it, it won't change as fast, it won't grow as much. So what Vishnu Ghosh did in his school in Calcutta, he wouldn't have just one class for all his students. He would find a student, a person that may need a little more upper body strength, then he would subscribe postures to help somebody with the upper body strength. Somebody needs more hip openers. He'd subscribe a whole sequence for hip openers. And that's when the light bulb went out of my head. When I had now Bikram and I split, I had the freedom of now of making these changes. I started coming up with different poses so that it could penetrate into those areas in an even deeper, more concentrated way. So the last 20 minutes of my class, we have four options. Sometimes there's a fifth option. I haven't done the fifth option in a long time, but I really should start doing it more. The first option is the Cobra series. That's in Bikram sequence, Cobra Locus, Full Locus Bow, which is shared by other lineages, FYI. And then we go right to leg stretching, spine twists, Kapovati. But that's it, because we don't have enough time to do all the four poses, because I've done all those hip openers that I'd mentioned before. Happy baby, foot to knee pose one and two, and so on. And then I go to day two, another option. Day two is fixed firm, half tortoise, camel rabbit, also right out of Bikram sequence, but in my sequence. And then we do leg stretching. And then I add the pigeon pose that's not in the Bikram beginning class, but it's in Bikram's advanced class, but we do the beginning version, just one legged pigeon pose, another great hip opener, FYI. And then day three are hip openers. More hips, move those hips, come on. 
postures that we're gonna get deep inside. One posture we do is called 90-90 that gets really, really intense. We hold it for a long period of time. Definitely a posture they came up with in the West that was not an original yogic asana. Second was definitely, arguably one of the original 84 poses called Gomukhasana or cow face pose. Once again, opening the hips and the shoulders, by the way. Then we do spine twist and pigeon. So what we're doing is concentrating on opening up those hips that particular day, getting deep into that area, very much like Bishnu Ghosh, to penetrate in, create more of a range of motion, freedom of movement. And then day four is my favorite day because day four is Back bend day. In the hot yoga world, coming from Vishnu Ghosh and Bikram and Barkin, we exaggerate the back bends. You can see some very dramatic pictures of people doing back bends. With day four, we do cobra, full locust. I skip locust, go right to full locust, bow pose. Then we do camel three sets. Oh, God. <laughs> That's way too many. And then in between, we do chow pose. And then after the third set, we do rabbit. And then we do Bridge and wheel pose, especially if you have a little more back bending and more shoulder rotation, wheel pose is really a dramatic position. So once again, what we're doing is diving into those areas to penetrate deeply to create more of a range of motion. So every day you're gonna get a different day in the Barkin Method class. And one last point, I do have, like I said before, two classes in the Barkin Method world. There's the hot yoga class, which is a little more similar to Bikram in that we do two sets of each of the balancing postures, standing hip to knee, standing bow, I consider to be the marquee poses in the hot yoga world. And then there's the Barkin Method hot vinyasa class, which has more of those sun salutation transition vinyasas, upper dog, downward dog in between. So it's a faster class. It works more on upper body strength and more on cardiovascular. But when we get to the floor, and we get to day one, day two, day three, and day four, in the hot yoga and the vinyasa, it's the same thing. We don't switch it up. So the point of this whole video, why am I doing all this? I'm adding on, I'm creating more range of motion, more variety, more versatility to add more range of motion to the body, especially the spine. The spine and the brain are the key in hatha yoga. That's how we create the connection to the universe. That's how we keep our bodies and our mind and our soul connected, so we connect with the universe. The concept of yoga is the union between man and God, woman and God. And if you want to take yoga classes with me, we have a hot yoga on-demand membership and we have over 500 classes now, both the hot yoga and the hot vinyasa class. And we feature all these different days. I put the link down in the description below. And if you're interested in doing a hot yoga teacher training program with me, live and online. And like I said before, we do offer the 26 and two. I'm more specialized in the Barkin method, but if you just want the 26 and two, we have that option as well. So there's a little bit of history of why I chose those poses, how I came up with the concept, how lovers still honoring Bikram and Bishnu Ghosh and the hot yoga world. So that's our episode for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Hit the like button. If you want to learn all about hot yoga flows, factoids, like videos like this, hit the like button and the subscribe button right now, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.